my name is Freya and welcome to my broom closet. So as you may know already, research is a huge part of practicing witchcraft. I know that I definitely spend most of my time researching when it comes to my craft. There is just so much to learn. Witchcraft covers so many areas and it can seem pretty overwhelming when you first start out with just how much there is to learn and research. You know, you're always told to kind of read from as many sources as you can so you can verify the information and so research is definitely not the easiest thing to do in the broom closet at least keeping it secret anyway so this video is just going to be a few tips just to help you keep your research secret and to help you avoid some of the pitfalls and traps and disadvantages when you're trying to research and try and also hide it from family and friends as well so let's just get right into it and go on to the first tip. So the first tip I have for broom closet witches is to always browse in incognito mode. The most important thing for conducting research, especially if you share your PC with other people, is to browse in incognito mode for anything occult related. You can open an incognito window by pressing Control shift n or Command shift n on a Mac that works for most browsers, Google Chrome, Opera, I believe that works on Firefox as well. There might be a couple that don't do it, but most browsers will have an incognito mode that you can access. This mode, what it does is it turns off cookie tracking and also does not save browser history, which is very important. So this mode is very important because you want to turn off cookies so you don't get targeted ads. If you don't do that, then once you return to the surface web and your normal browsing, you can start to get targeted ads like tarot readings and courses in witchcraft and things like that. And that's something you want to avoid because you don't want anyone seeing these ads. And like I said, incognito mode also disables browsing history. So if you have any particularly nosy friends or family, then they will not be able to look up what you have been up to online. The only downside of not saving your browser history is of course that you might forget where you read something. So it's always important to kind of have a notebook or a book of shadows where you can note down where you learned something. But I will elaborate on how to keep a book of shadows safe further into this video. So the second tip I have is to use alternative accounts. So this is a good way to somewhat save your search history whilst also not worrying too much about cookies. The best example of this is uh, YouTube accounts. I have two alternative YouTube accounts. I have one for my mundane stuff, like watching PewDiePie and stuff like that. But I also have a witchy account, which is this account, of course, which I make my videos on and watch other witches and tarot videos and mental health videos and, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so this way, when I log into my mundane account, I get all these mundane suggestions. And when I log into my witchy account, I get all my witchy suggestions. So the idea is that you just log into your alternative account whenever appropriate, whenever you're alone, and you can just get right into your suggested content. You should probably only access these accounts in incognito mode. This means that like your content still gets recommended to you every time you log in, but once you log out and go into non-incognito mode, then that you don't get those targeted ads and suggested content. The things that I recommend making alternative accounts for is Gmail, for sure, because it can be used for so many other things, like you can't make a YouTube account without a Gmail account. YouTube, as I mentioned, Reddit, I, I use alternative Reddit accounts. Google Drive, again, this is attached to your Gmail account, so that's why you need to make alternative Gmails. I really love Google Drive for um, saving and sharing resources on witchy stuff and also Amazon. So if you have a habit of buying witchy supplies on Amazon, it's a really good idea to make an alternative account for that. 
just because Amazon has like a really annoying habit of emailing you when you've looked at something recently. So if you don't use an alternative email for that, then it can turn up in your inbox and someone might see it. Also your recently viewed products also appear like on the front page when you log in. And so again, someone else might see that if they're looking for a product with you on Amazon. Another thing that's good to have an alternative account for is Spotify, which is like any site that you listen to podcasts on. So again, same logic behind this, you just don't want the witchy suggested content suggested to you, someone else might be borrowing your account or you know, something like that. So those are the main things that I have alternative accounts for, um, but you, you know, you might want to have alt accounts for different stuff as well. The third tip I have for you is ebooks and archiving sites. These kind of go hand in hand. A lot of the time when I see newbie witches asking for beginner tips and beginner resources, a lot of witches suggest books for them to read. While not guaranteed to be perfect and reliable sources of information, they can be a lot more trustworthy than other sources. And so they are quite a good place to start. Unfortunately, they can be very expensive and especially in the broom closet they can be very hard to hide if you get physical copies. This is why I suggest looking for ebooks on archiving sites. There are quite a few sites out there that archive information like websites and also books. My favourite one to go to is the i.eu slash occult library but you know there's also a few others like ecauldron.net, metaphysicspirit.com, witches collection on tumblr, occultresources.com, zlibrary, pdfdrive.com, and libgen. Of course, those are the free options if you're a budget witch, but if you have some money to spend, then you have some more options. You can download ebooks onto your Kindle. Ebooks are generally cheaper than physical copies, and you also don't have to worry about hiding them as much. But I don't know too much about this because I don't actually own a Kindle myself. Audible is actually a good place to listen to ebooks, but you might want to think about avoiding the fake authors, of course. I have a video all about that that will be in an iCard or in the description. But anyway, with Audible, this can work for closet witches just because you don't have to have them open on your desktop, you can just listen to them in headphones. But again, you'll probably want to make an alternative account for this since Audible is attached to your Amazon account. If you don't want to support Amazon and Audible in any way, like a completely understand. You can try Scribd. There's also an alternative to Scribd which is Bookmate. I think there's a few others as well but those are the two that I know. You don't have to just use it for witchy stuff. There's also like educational articles and sheet music. So you could kind of use that as an excuse like if you're a student then you can have a subscription to Scribd or I think it might be scribed or bookmate and use some of the educational content on there as well as the witchy resources. The next tip I have, which is a severely underrated one, is to use your local library. Not only can you obviously borrow books on witchcraft from there, but you can also use the computers in the library and do research that way. So that way you don't have to worry about someone snooping your browser history because you know, it's not your computer. And of course, like I said, you can also borrow books on witchcraft. If your library doesn't have like a particular book that you want, you can also ask them to order it in for you. Of course, the best part of using libraries is that they are free. If you're in school or college, you can justify using the library so much, saying that, oh, you have a test coming up, or you know, you have a dissertation. So you can kind of justify spending loads of time in the library. A tip, related to using local libraries is also bookshops. So when I was in college, I used to waste hours of my life waiting for the bus in the evenings. And so what I would do, I would walk down to the bookstore that was nearby and I would just go to the self-help section or spiritual section and pick out a witchy book. And then I would sit and read it for like an hour while I waited for the bus. So I actually read quite a few books this way totally free. I did buy them after I read them, like most of them, but you know, this was a great way to just sneakily research and read up on witchcraft without having to worry about hiding these books. Occasionally some bookstores might have rules about sitting and reading for prolonged amounts of time, 
but in general I don't think many stores care about this, especially like big chain bookstores like Waterstones and WH Smith. I don't think they really care about that. Obviously it's best to like actually buy the book after you've read it, but you know, when you're a closeted witch then any method for you to do research is a good one, right? The next tip I have is to listen to podcasts. Podcasts have huge potential to be really useful to broom closet witches because as long as you have headphones you can just listen to a witchy book or something whilst doing anything else on your computer or your phone. You can just go around the house and do your chores or you can study and do homework just while you're listening. Someone might be thinking that you're listening to music but you're actually researching witchcraft while you're just passively doing house chores and things like that. So I love podcasts because there's nothing to hide, you don't have to hide a book or something and you don't have to worry about someone walking up to your desktop and seeing what's on your screen. If you are particularly closeted and there's a chance that someone might see what's on your phone, I suggest like choosing to only listen to podcasts that don't have witch in the name or witchcraft or anything like that. There are quite a few of those luckily, just a few that I found is What's Your Sign which is an astrology podcast, Between the Worlds which is a tarot, psychology, mythology and witchcraft podcast, Elder Hour which is on the history, magical properties and science behind plants, Moonbeaming which is all about moon lore and also Earthspeak which is about spirit work connecting with nature and self-care. So these are all great witchcraft topics that you can learn about. Okay, now I'm going to move on to ways you can keep your research safe, like, you know, in the form of a book of shadows or a notebook or something like that. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that. So this tip I have for you is about password protected apps. If you prefer not to keep a physical book of shadows, totally understandable because they're quite difficult to hide, then Google Drive is perfect alternative for making a virtual or digital book of shadows. The great thing with this is that the mobile app has an option to put a password on it and so every time you open this app you can't gain access until the passcode is entered. There's also other cloud storage apps that do this like Dropbox. Another app you might want to try is the Secret Calculator app. On the surface these sort of apps look like just a normal calculator and they function like one but if you enter a special passcode then you can enter it and access secret files and documents. This includes photos, audio files and notes. There are quite a few secret calculator apps out there and they all work like pretty much the same but this can be an option for you especially if you're like really closeted. It can be a good kind of digital book of shadows or just a place to save your research. If you exclusively use a desktop and not a mobile phone then you can put passcodes on Word documents and also OneNote pages. I also have a video on best apps to use for a digital book of shadows, so you might want to check that out. That will be in an iCard or something or in the description. The final two tips I have for you is things to avoid doing when you're researching in the broom closet. So the first thing I recommend avoiding is Facebook. You might be really tempted to follow and like witchy pages on Facebook, but I don't recommend this just because there's a chance that family and friends might see your activity on their timelines. Facebook is absolutely terrible for this. Anything you do, comment on like any random post, your family will see it. It's really annoying. You might be thinking that you can just make an alternative account for Facebook, but Facebook can actually detect alternative accounts and stop you. This is mostly to stop people impersonating you, but it also stops you from making alternative accounts. Uh, you also can't use fake or made up names, so it's really tricky to make an alternative account on Facebook as well. Private groups on Facebook tend to be much safer, but again, there's a chance that they can be recommended to your friends on Facebook. And also, this doesn't stop targeted ads, which Facebook is notorious for. Related to this is related sites to Facebook, so you should really be aware that 
Facebook owned sites like Instagram and WhatsApp and so you can also get third party cookies from those as well. I have personally ran into problems like this. I made an alternative account for my Instagram and I still got targeted ads because my Instagram account was able to see my Facebook cookies even though I hadn't signed up with Facebook and I hadn't attached my Instagram account to my Facebook account. So that's kind of scary. So just, you know, be aware that Facebook owned Owned sites like Instagram and WhatsApp aren't really kind of safe to use if you are especially closeted I mean the final tip I have is to avoid TikTok now I do occasionally enjoy watching the occasional witch talk as they are called um, but this is only because I have years of research behind me so I'm able to separate the wheat from the chaff as it were sites like TikTok are very notorious for spreading misinformation and so I would avoid them when you're just starting out like as a baby witch just because you have no way of telling what's useful what isn't what's misinformation and what's credible and I don't have much against witch talk it's just not that good for beginners it's just not very good for very in-depth research when you're trying to you know get to the bottom of something and get some really reliable information but you know if you still enjoy using witch talk I know I certainly do sometimes then just at least take everything you see with a huge pinch of salt that is the best thing but yeah those are my tips for conducting research in the broom closet I hope this was useful in some way and if it was then give it a thumbs up Feel free to comment down below some of your tips for conducting research in secret. If you need any more information on anything in the broom closet, then just visit the subreddit r slash broomclosetwitch on reddit. There's also a link to a discord server on there, but you can join and meet other broom closet witches just like yourself. But with that, I hope you guys stay safe, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you next time, blessed be.